I just have to tell you, I just, I have to just do one like, yeah, like Russian anecdote. One of the things I did, you'll love this, right? Uh, talk about just amazing economics that the military understands. Uh, in Afghanistan, we came up with the idea that if we put the people to work, they wouldn't attack us. Reasonable enough. Um, so we would, you know, we would pay them and they'd pretend to work. And then of course they'd pay a kickback to the Taliban. But at one point I had 1200 Afghans who would line up once a week for payday and I would pay them to like dig ditches and paint like buildings, just do fake work so that I was putting in work. Yeah. I had the biggest cash for work program. That's what we called it. CFW cash for work. I had the biggest one in Southern Afghanistan for a minute. But, um, so anyway, <laughs> they would you know, line up and it was, yeah, I have yeah. pictures that I will send you like of the welfare line. In fact, one of my pictures is called like Danny's personal welfare line. You know, it could be like, like libertarians would kind of love it because like, there's like so much there about like why it doesn't work to just give stuff away. But no, 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 yeah. no, 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 wait, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> so, you know, I'm so yeah. So, you know, I'm writing this book, right? This whole uh -huh. book, history of foreign policy. Um, and uh, it's got several sort of themes in it, but one of the themes is that it became clear to me in doing the research. I did not know this really until I started doing the research and a few other historians have kind of touched on it. Um, but that beginning with Woodrow Wilson and then through Franklin Roosevelt, Harry Truman, Kennedy Johnson, um, for sure, the objective in fighting all those wars, World Wars I, II, Korea, Vietnam, the objective for those guys was only primarily to defeat or stop communism. The main overarching objective for all of the, or, or the bad guys in Germany, um, the main overarching objective, and they said this, and I've got their receipts in terms of quotes, was we want, as I said about Vietnam, we want to make the Tennessee Valley, we want to make the Mekong Delta into the Tennessee Valley meaning the Tennessee Valley Authority, which was the centerpiece of the New Deal, which was to say that they wanted to create, recreate the whole world, not just in the image of America, but the New Deal America, progressive America. So when you tell me, I didn't know this dude until you just told me this, when you're telling me, and this was a big deal in Vietnam. Yes. They would employ, just like you did, they would employ the peasants in these villages to do all this make work stuff, or sometimes it was like real, just like development projects, you know, digging ditches, right? and with the express purpose of getting them to be on our side instead of the commie Viet Cong side who were offering them land instead of jobs like we were, right? <laughs> now you're telling me that even in Afghanistan that's going on, right? That backpacks, backpacks with hundreds of thousands of dollars. The welfare handed, state. Handed over to my second lieutenant who was in charge of it named Jordan Rich you brought, who would give it out. Yeah, I mean, you were... So, you were so, so yeah, the anecdote about like illiteracy, but I think we'll also get to this like whole interesting thing that involves like this, what you're pointing out, which is so important about like Mekong becomes TVA. Well, I, I made Kandahar into the TVA, right? Yeah, right. Uh, but, but of course, even like, like way less effective, you know, uh, obviously, but they, uh, they would sign up, they would come up and like the American bureau, you know, the army runs on paperwork still like, right. So bureaucracy. So they had a sign for their pay. Because somehow if they signed for their pay, that means that I couldn't steal it or they couldn't. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just, but it's, it, it's stupid, but they had to do it. Yeah. But they can't write their names. Well, I, was also, in the, I was in the Appalachia of Afghanistan. Kandahar? Okay? Kandahar? Yes. And I wasn't in the city of Kandahar. I was in rural, the Argandab Valley, famous because the Soviets couldn't take it. Like we yeah. were very proud that we, my troop, like assaulted further south to the Argonaut River than the Soviets ever got, right? We were really proud of that. Stupid, it meant nothing, but that's what we took pride in. Like, mm -hmm. we are badass. It's like we're in the most dangerous valley, like, or one of the most dangerous valleys in Afghanistan, right? So I put this into a place. Um, it, I got a lot of attention because of it. Like, generals would come visit. They'd be like, wow, you really have got it. You figured it out, Captain. This is, if we could just get every officer to be so forward thinking about you as you, putting these people to work. And I'm like, this is bullshit. Like, like, but I, and so how do you know that it's bullshit? Sometimes anecdotes that are funny can be instructive. Uh, these people can't sign their name. They don't know how old they are. Right. They do not know how old they are. If you ask them to describe how old they are, they describe it like this. Uh, I was born in the, the third decade of the old king's life when, when there was a full moon in the sky because that's what the, their parents told them. And you're like, and then you go back and Google and you're like, I think you're about 79. That's like, and then you tell them and they're like, huh. It's like a great conversation to have with an elder. Anyway, but they can't sign their name. They don't know how old they are. So there was one dude who like, but you have to make them. 
So some scribble, some do the ink thing like they voted. And they, you know, you make them make their mark, like in the old Western movie, sign your name or make your mark before you sign up for the posse. Um, one guy used to draw a chicken next to his name, a beautiful, tiny little chicken. He was like an artist. It was beautiful. And every week, chicken guy would sign it. Uh, and that, but we, we accepted it. We were like, yep, that's good. That looks, that works. And we just like laughed about it, but this is like our lives. But there was another pair. So we pretend to, we pretend, we paid them and they pretended to work. Um, and of course the big picture is the Taliban never attacked these big lines of a thousand people waiting all day to get paid. Now, if you, wouldn't you think mm. that that would be the best target for the suicide bombing Taliban? Mm. Folks? The fact that they weren't attacking them. I told my Colonel, this means that the workers and the foremen who we paid more money to like organize it, they are paying a kickback to the Taliban. So the Taliban is profiting directly from what we're doing here. <laughs> and I said, I'm not necessarily we should saying we should shut it down. I just think we should be honest about this with ourselves. And he was like, don't ever say that when the generals come. Literally, don't ever say that. Oh, so anyway, there's that. But so we pretend to make them work. So just to give you an idea of like how like the libertarian mind will love this, like our favorite pair, and I can send you a picture of this, were called Backpack Man and The Ride. Now, Backpack Man and The Ride would line up every week, and they actually did work, I'll tell you. The reason they have the nicknames Backpack Man and The Ride is when the Taliban buries bombs, or we do airstrikes, but it's usually Taliban bombs, people step on them who aren't the intended targets. Mm. And so children, old people get killed all the time. It's one of the awful travesties of war. And the area that I patrolled was like, the island of misfit toys i mean there were like way more people than limbs you know or whatever you know what i mean it was like they didn't add up so the ride was missing both arms and backpack man was missing both legs and one arm and so i have to send you the picture because it's like a change it's like life altering funny but dark backpack man would ride on the ride with his one arm around his neck on his back and backpack man with no arms would carry him into line and we would pay them a full salary, just like the other workers, every week. And they, they make, that's just to give you an idea of like, that's what America was doing in 2011 when this intellectual, like, you know, re refined General McChrystal was going to win the war with coin. Just like to let you know, that's what was happening. God damn. Nice guys, by the way. And, and Backpack Man <laughs> did pick up a pick and try to like, he would work and clean out the canal. He worked harder than most of the... The, the, the people with all their limbs who just would pretend, but that was, so we, that, was, that was my life. So we blow off half their limbs, then we combine two of their bodies to make one Afghan worker. Almost, because <laughs> they still only have three. Oh, no, I guess, yeah, they still only have three limbs between them. And then we pay them welfare to keep them working so that they don't rebel against us. Which they pay off the top to the Taliban. And then they give some of that to the Taliban. So Which is the, why they don't attack their line. So the Taliban become also welfare queens from the system. So Danny, it sounds like it, it was working out pretty well. Um, I think so. Like, yeah, I think so. It was very, uh, sounds like it was a, good economics. It was really good economics. It was very well, Keynesian. Just a well thought through operation in general, the Afghanistan <laughs> war um, from beginning to end, I think. Uh, now that it's been how long? Two centuries? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah no, I wrote just, an article. Just two decades. An article, yeah, I wrote an article for the American Conservative called The Curious Case of Jordan Rich all about the lieutenant in charge of that program. And uh, oh, wow. it, it's worth checking out if any listener just Fantastic. Google it. Like, Kelly really liked it, and it basically Fantastic. tells this story. And I used his, I just told his story, and then I didn't even have to really make a political point because it told itself about the absurdity of the surge in Afghanistan. Yeah, man. But we're going to bring the welfare state to the whole world. It's a progressive cause, Danny. This is what I'm telling you. And by the way, this whole, this whole thing about, like, we're going to give them money to do jobs for make work so that they don't rebel against us. I was immediately thought, oh, that's the federal jobs guarantee that's being debated domestically now. It's like they want to, I think that's, yeah, I know that's one of the reasons that liberals would like to give that to people to stop us from rebelling in the streets, right? <laughs> they give us a federal yeah. jobs guarantee. <laughs> it, works not, it works not just with the Afghan, it, it works with Americans too.